Yeah, that's uh, switch. Yeah, I got a switch. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there was a problem with the uh, the microphones were not working. If everyone would please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If everyone would please remain standing for moment of silent reflection for servicemen and women throughout the world and also for those who have died in our community during the past week, um, especially Bill Connell, uh, a good friend of the administration and a good friend to um, all the members of council. Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscom? Here. Mr. Gahan? Here. Mr. McGough? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A. Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation Report received January 24, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Clerk's notes? Nothing at this time, Mr. McGough. Um, do any council members have announcements at this time? I would just like to make note that uh, Attorney Pat Scanlon is present uh, in the absence of Attorney Menorah and will be serving as the um, interim solicitor at this time. On tonight's agenda, on tonight's agenda, the uh, the new ordinances, um, 5B is a, an ordinance that would be a ch zoning change for Audubon School, um, which has, uh, Audubon as a school has been closed. It's across from Geisinger Hospital. Um, the zoning change would, would allow for the purchase of Audubon, High Sc or Audubon School by Geisinger Hospital and um, for their use. Um, we'll speak more of it when it's, um, when it's presented. Also, uh, there are two, two appointments uh, that for two different reasons, uh, seven, seven B and seven C, the intent is to um, table both of those. Um, one, it, because of the uh, death of Bill Connell, um, who was being appointed to um, the Scranton Parking Authority, and the other, uh, the appointment of Paul McGloin, who withdrew his, his name from, um, from consideration. And that is all. Uh, Mr. McGough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I did have one on all. No, please. Um, Geisinger Blood Center, in cooperation with the Scranton Fire Department, We'll be conducting a blood drive on Tuesday, March 11th, 2014, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that'll be at Engine 7 at 1917 Luzerne Street. And it will be uh, Geisinger's donor coach, they call it. It's, it's like a bus um, where they take the donations. To schedule an appointment, please visit their website at www.geisingerbloodcenter.org and click on Make an Appointment. But as always, walk-ins are more than welcome. And that's all I have. Thank you. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Uh, first speaker on the list is Faye Frannis. <clears throat> Faye Frannis, Granton. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have a couple of items I want to discuss tonight. First of all, the garbage, my garbage hasn't been picked up in two weeks. 
and I called DPW the other day and the man that answered said that you know, they'll get to it when they get to it and hopefully it'll be this week. So I told him that everybody had their garbage pile up way above their garbage cans. He didn't believe that. I said, not just that, I said, but the animals are getting in there and they're ripping things apart. And I said, what do you say to that? He said, buy more garbage cans. That was his response. So I think there's no excuse for this. We're paying a $300 garbage fee. I do not think the na my next door neighbor has bags today when I pull in. Her whole bag was ripped to shreds from the animals. Meat wrappers, peanut butter cup wrappers all over the street because of this. And that's just one house. Uh, another thing, Mr. Mr. Gahn, uh, I don't agree with what you stated last week, I believe, or about the amnesty for the taxes. Uh, let's put it this way. What I should do and every other person in the city should do is like right now I put money away every week for my taxes, okay, every month. And then at the end of the year I have it. So I think what I'll do and everybody else should do is we should put money aside for our taxes so we'll have it. And then don't pay the taxes. Let it go for like three or four years. And then maybe you could come up with this plan again and then they could say, okay, just pay, just pay your taxes for the last two years and we'll forget the other three. It's not right. I'm paying my taxes and so are many others. Why should other people that maybe owe taxes for five or six years only have to pay maybe two and we'll just forget about the last four? That's not fair to everybody else that pays taxes. If that's the case, then I won't pay my taxes. And then I'll come back and say, if you could do it for them, you could do it for me. I want amnesty too for the last five years. So that's not right. What you should do is just take the penalties and the fines off them, but make them still pay all their taxes. If you want to take the penalties and fines, that's one thing. You stop the time here. No, wait until you I, I Jimmy. I just wanted to say that. That is what they do. They, they don't. You don't, they don't forgive all of your taxes. It's, no, generally, it's generally only the uh, interest and the penalties on it. didn't say that in the paper. It said that you were going to forgive the past years. That's and, what it said. Right. That's, I, well, that's not what I meant. It's, well, that's not how Believe it me, it didn't say penalties and interest. It said right. previous years would be forgiven and just pay the, like the last two. I, Faye, in all honesty, we, we discussed this and that exactly what he said. He, he okay, was just but, looking at the penalties and, and stuff. Well, so that's wonderful if that's the case, but the paper right didn't put that. They I'm said the sure. past years. Okay. No, another thing. Hmm. I just heard on the way over here, Steve Corbett was saying that the city now, when you want to write the no, you have to fill out a form. Is that true? What was that? A city form or something like for the right to know? Yes. There's a city so. form you have to fill out. I believe so. Pardon me? I believe there is a, a form to but fill But that's out. the only way you could get a right to know request in? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Is that the only way you could get a right to know request in? I believe. Uh, well, Steve I, Corbett. I, I, was, I'm, I don't know. Steve Corbett was talking to the head of this in Harrisburg at the time on the radio on the way over. And the law, state law in Harrisburg says that you could send the right to know in by email. You could call. It's right in the law that you could email a request in. You do not have to go and use city forms. They said the Harrisburg is state law supersedes the city law that might change that. Okay. So if anybody wants the right to know, just email or do what it, call in or whatever you want. But you don't have to fill out a city form. Huh. Now, another thing. I came to this meeting tonight. I came to the caucus. I was here like 5 to 6. And I was told that I could not go into the back room until the caucus started at 6 o'clock. And in the back room before 6 o'clock, there was four councilmen, which is a quorum. Now, I may be wrong, but I would definitely check into this, and I will get back to you on this, as will Marie Schumacher. Because we were told that it's against the Sunshine Law for any time there's more than two council members to meet. It's quorum. Mr. McGough told me outright it is not true. They have a right to meet with more than two people, and we are not allowed back in there until after 6 o'clock when the caucus started. And I don't agree with that. For all we knew, there could have been a meeting back there. We don't know what was going on. The doors, we were, we were, they were sequestered. The public was not allowed in there when there was more than two council members. There was four of them. The only one missing was Mr. Rogan. So I do not think it's right. And I also think the people from Geisinger were there discussing their tearing down Audubon School. I think the people in the city that watched this council meeting should have had a right to see this here. Why is there no 
count caucuses out here in the chambers anymore so people could see it. Why no transparency? Why, why the hidden agenda here? It doesn't make sense. And then I think that should be changed because we got along much better when we had caucuses out here for everyone to see, not just three or four people. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Francis. Joan Hodewanitz, city taxpayer. Good evening. Um, good evening. Um, with regard to the appointments that the mayor makes to various authorities, it's my understanding that the mayor makes these appointments and he does not require approval by council. Is that correct? I, I, I'm not sure. In the past, all, all appointments come before council. I understand they come before council, but if you didn't... If we vote no, yes. it seems as though those appointments still stand. Okay, that was my understanding. That it, ours I, is a... Endorsement? Yeah, I, I guess... Okay. Uh, that might be the best word. When these nominations come uh, before you, um, <laughs> is there any indication from the administration that these individuals have been vetted in any way? You know, criminal background check, they've paid their taxes, they've paid all their fees to the city, or is it simply you've received a letter intent that, you know, they want to be on the board? What do you get? We get a name. Okay. You get no assurance, though, from the um, administration that they've been vetted? Other than the fact that we have asked for a resume from those who have been appointed. No, um, no there is no assurance. And, and I do not believe that, that, that by law, the mayor needs to do that. I understand that. I, and I, I'm just saying that everybody mm -hmm. seems to be following procedurally what they should do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think what you're suggesting is there may be a better way of. Yes. Of, uh, the administration of doing obviously this. has only been, you know, in for a month or so. And so they're new. But having had this one embarrassing incident uh, in the last week, I think it would behoove the administration. Um, to do that bit of homework so there's no public embarrassment either to the administration or to the individual being nominated. Because I, I will tell you, there's going to be people like me and other people, um, you know, who might inadvertently catch something, and, and there will be embarrassment, and that's unfortunate. It shouldn't come, become a public issue that way. Well, hopefully the administration won't do that a second time. <laughs> And also, these people do represent me as a taxpayer, whether they're sitting on a board and getting paid or it's an unpaid position. They're representing me. They're in a position of public trust, and, and I think that's appropriate. When I went to work for Moses Taylor, I, they did a criminal background check and, and a drug test, you know? Um, it, it's just common sense. And the second thing is, yesterday there was an article in the paper, City to Hire Fiscal Expert. I guess this is in addition to Mr. Amoroso, who was hired by the Chamber of Commerce. Has the administration uh, contacted any of the council members about uh, this RFP so that you can all work off of one sheet of music and hopefully there will be no duplication of effort or working at cross purposes? It may be necessary to have a fiscal expert to help with the um, you know, planning on repairing the city's credit worthiness and uh, secure loans. But I'm kind of surprised, you know, I mean, how many financial consultants do we need? And we're only into month number two. Hopefully they're talking to you about this, this initiative, because I suspect this is coming before council in the near future. Uh, I, I don't want to take your time up. Uh, it, um. The hiring of the fiscal expert would be, my understanding from communicating with the administration, 
is that this would be this person would be more long term. Mr. Amoroso was hired, I believe, for a six month period. Six month period by the chamber. Kind of the you know, relief idea that the fiscal expert would be the one that would be more long term in dealing pr more with um, how we would um, are negotiating <laughs> payments for the awards and that type of thing. Well, hopefully down the road, though, he'll also continue with the budget process since Mr. Amoroso is only here for six months and the budgets will go on forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Spiraglia. <coughs> Andy Spiraglia, Citizens Grant, Fellows Grantonians. Good evening. You're right. We do need some type of a fiscal expert. But we all know what the problem is. We don't need somebody to say this is a problem. The problem is with the city workers and the nonprofits. Both of them are the problems. So there's no way out of that. Now, what he can do with this, he can't do nothing with the city workers for about three years. Usually the solution has been sell assets, raise taxes. And you have done that very good. 100% raise in taxes. You saw this, what happened to our city assets you did sell, like the golf course, Southside Complex. That money was poured into a bucket. And I don't think you're gonna do nothing unless you attack what we can do with the, <laughs> the city, employees, or the nonprofits. We're in line for more taxes. There's no way out of it. What do you want to raise the wage tax? What do you want to go around and get all this knit and tech that you've been doing? $10 to put a sign up in front of your house that you're a handicap. Knowing that state law says anybody could park at that sign that's handicapped. This is what the city has been doing. And you haven't, you've been sitting there, a lot of you have been there for four, some even seven years. You haven't solved one problem from the city. All you did was sit there and say this or that, but you didn't solve any problems. You have not gotten the nonprofits to do much. And you're not going to get the nonprofits to do much until you look at something to attack them. They'll only respond if it's cheaper to pay you than pay someone else. And that's what you got to do. You can't sit there and keep raising people's taxes, thinking this is the way to go, or selling sewer authority, parking garages, or whatever. Ask them our one time. We already did that. And where have we gotten deeper in debt? I remember when they sold the golf course, that money was supposed to go to a trust fund for the parks. Well, you know, Mr. McGough, where it went, because you took it out of there and put it into the budget. So these things you have done, but you haven't solved one problem. The problems are still there and will continue to be there until you find some way to get the nonprofits to kick up more money. And unless you do that, we're in line for selling of more assets. I wish they sold City Hall or raising taxes or setting out all these nuisance taxes that you seem to be pushing now. Wonder why you're getting complaints from everybody. We're taxed enough. I mean, you, when you always talked about the real estate tax, but the Scantonians pay more than that. They pay a wage tax on top of that real estate tax. They also pay for the refuge, another amount of money. All these things you're playing on the taxpayers. And the truth is, the taxpayers' average salary is about 27,000, they said. The average worker in the city makes about 27000 The average public employee is probably up to about 37 or 40. You got all kinds of things written into them contracts. You can't do nothing about them now because they're in stone. But there's no reason for somebody to get a raise because they work at a job for five years. They get a raise when they go up in rank, just like we did in service. When a man gets a promotion, he gets a raise. 
you give a person a raise just because they've been sitting on their in the services for five years or so longevity this that whatever you have too many perks when them people were making a dollar ten an hour they needed them perks but they're no longer there they're making more than the average worker that's paying for them that's where the problem is and if you if you unless you get there and start working on these problems you're going to just sit there and raise our taxes next year that's all you can do because the money isn't there and isn't going to be there and what you can do with the nonprofits I don't know I told you one thing you should start charging for fire service police service or whatever and break it down like we par for refuge and I still don't know if every citizen that wishes to go to a private hauler can do it because the university has their own hauler and if an individual taxpayer wants to hire their own hauler hauler they should be allowed to do it thank you thank you thank you mr spragley mr tobin Good evening. Yeah, I'm back. Pretty mad. Very disgusted. I thought maybe things would change this year in January when we got a new administration. It hasn't. I was going down the street the other day, and right over here on, Mulber on Mulberry Street, a lady was trying to get across the cutout with a walker. Thank God she had somebody with her. Because the walker went one way and she went the other because of snow, ice, that thick. When I get back up from downtown and try to go across that street, I gave my cart a little extra gas. The next thing I knew, Spun right around and was right back in the middle of Mulberry Street. I have complained twice to the mayor. The second answer I got from him is, well, I had them out twice cleaning it. In other words, two times should be enough. I went to go on the bus the other day. You have an ordinance. I would like to read part of it to you in case you haven't uh, you forgot what it says. I'd like the, you to take, pay close attention because I'm going to ask some questions. City of Scranton Code, Article 745, pertaining to sidewalks, is hereby repealed. Regulation of sidewalk is to cover exclusively by BOCA Property Maintenance Court. Code. Section 2. If any section clause or a portion of this ordinance shall be held unconstitutional by the courts. Such decisions <laughs> shall not affect any other section clause provisions or so such. 
Section 3, the ordinance shall become effective immediately upon approval. Section 4, the ordinance is enacted by the Council of Scranton on the, the authority of legislators April 13th, 1972 known as a home rule charter option plan and other acceptable risings onto the law. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this. Whereas, by ordinance, the city of Scranton adopted the BOCA Property Maintenance Code. Whereas, from time to time, the city of Scranton has amended the code to tailor its vision to the needs of the city of Scranton. Whereas, the BOC Property Maintenance Code, need, code needs to be clarified as it pertains to the removal of hazardous substance from sidewalks. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Scranton, the Section PM 303 of the BOC Property Maintenance Court, as it told as adopted by the City of Scranton, is hereby amended to read in its entirety as follows. All sidewalks, walkways, stairways, driveways, parking space, similar areas shall be kept in a proper state of repair, maintenance free from hazardous conditions, Stairs shall comply with the requirements of Section PM 304 and PM 702. For the purpose of this section, with the hazardous conditions, shall include snow, ice, and debris. Okay. Driveways, parking ways, parking spaces and similar areas. Such hazardous substance must be removed within 24 hours after the appearance of such hazardous substance. On the walkway, on the sidewalk, walkways, stairs, driveway, parking spaces, and similar areas. Down in front of what used to be the Globe Store, which is uh, diversity or diversified company now, they cleared the sidewalk in front of their building, I would say maybe 10 feet. That sidewalk is a hell of a lot bigger than 10 feet. I tried to get on the bus. I couldn't get up to the ramp to get onto the bus because of the ice and snow. The driver finally moved down onto Lackawanna Avenue, stopped traffic to let me on. Each one of you gentlemen have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the laws of the state of Pennsylvania. Isn't this a law? Yes, Mr. Tobin, it is. Then why aren't we taking care we of it? We are. We are? Yes. Well, how come? And, and it's and only... The and last, time, how, time let is, me finish, please. Uh, we're trying to. How come 
It's only the last two days that people have been able to get on the bus with one of these things down on. How come in front of the old banshee, Mr. Tobin, you I, get on I, the can't, sidewalk? I can't answer those questions for you. All I can tell you is that the DPW has makes attempts to comply with all regulations. Well, they're not. Who's responsible for seeing these laws are passed or were uh, obeyed? How much is the fine if you don't obey it? Go over in the go over on West Side, Mr. Tobin. Thank you. Go over on the West Side. The sidewalks over there are worse. Right, Mr. Rogan? Mr. Tobin, thank you. We understand the situation. I am to the stage that you shall be turned in to the federal government for an investigation. Because we should not have to put up with this. I can't walk. Mr. Sorry. Morgan? I think it's about time. This isn't the first year I've been fighting this issue. Mr. Lawson tried to help me last year. We got nowhere. It's about time somebody starts doing what they're supposed to, that they hold up their hand. I solemnly swear. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, you know, I want to just discuss a couple of things here tonight. I have the um, analysis of the proposed, uh, well, House Bill 76 and Senate Bill 76. It's right here. Um, the tax group had a meeting. There was a little discussion about that. I would hope that all legislators would vote against this bill. Um, and to be honest with you, the reason I think that needs to happen is school taxes aren't the only problem. Um, recently, I had to, I have a sister who lives in the city. I went out, I dug her car out in the snow. And I've had numerous residents, not just seniors, but every day people like myself, probably even people close to the age of Mr. Rogan, they can't take any more property tax. It's not just a problem on the school district level. It's a broad spectrum problem that includes city tax and county tax. There are a lot of people in this city that are totally disgusted on the situation in the city in regards to the massive property tax increase, but you know they better be ready for the next one that's gonna come. And a thing that's really got me troubled is all the fighting over sewer authority mem board members and parking authority. That's not our problem. I mean, unless we're trying to change these boards so we could sell these assets. And then my point is, um, you know, people ran for office. A nice gentleman just sat here and talked about when are we going to follow laws that have been found, that have been enacted by government. I'm going to tell you that it's probably never going to be never, unless it has to do with taxation. There's still fights going on in this country over the right to vote. I just think that. When you create a class of people who get elected to an office with such a low voter turnout, and when you have such a lack of faith of the, of the residents, not just in the city, but across this whole nation, that have no faith in the people they elect, that this is what happens. Because we enact laws, they're never followed. We have massive poverty in this country, and we have a president trying to do a Pacific Rim trade agreement and fast track it. Here's the solution to our problem. This is only just a very small sliver. This is the walking list just for Scranton, just a real small part. If every resident in this city went out and they voted, we could clean the judges out, the Lackawanna County Courthouse, the ones that shouldn't be there that the feds didn't come and take. Instead, they went after somebody who had no power. We could clean out the council. We can clean out the governor. We can get rid of all the dead weight we have in government. Because you know the truth of the matter is this. Just when you look at the city of Scranton, we've made no progress under the stress status. And instead, we've gone further in. 
And we've had people like the PEL tell us how great these plans are they have for us. Now we're talking, I mean, not to single out Mr. Rogan, but I think I read in the paper where you thought it might be a good idea to sell the parking garages. Absolutely. That's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life because they're worth massively more than that. Why would you sell an asset like that? How much did they cost to build? How much did they cost to build? We borrowed around $48 million. All right, so we have a $48 million investment in the parking garages, and we should just take what? Somebody said they're worth $21 million, so the city should walk away from all that? We're paying, uh, for every dollar in principal we pay, we're paying a dollar in interest. If we continue on the, the payment schedule we're currently on, mm -hmm. Um, that $50 million is going to cost the taxpayers $100 million. Didn't the council By, know that when they voted to build these garages? And didn't the mayor know that? Well, I didn't vote to build any I garages. I didn't say you did. This, I'm not singling you out, but this, this government knew that those were the long-range projections because I sat here and watched them discuss it, and they knew the parking authority couldn't handle the debt it was going to have. So it's not a big surprise what's going on here. We have a total lack of leadership in this country from the very top to the very bottom. All right, we're exploiting seniors and forcing them out of their homes into high rises. We're going to talk about nonprofits and all the other silliness that's taking place in this country. We have massive unemployment in this country. And you know something? We're the laughing stock of the world. Not just here, but across the world. When I was a child, America was number one in everything. Everything. I can't think of one thing that we're number one in except our military. So we have the ability to send our military somewhere and project massive power. But infant mortality, health care, poverty, it's ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Anyone else that wishes to speak? Oh, good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, good evening. I, and I know that I am delinquent in getting my questions in from last Saturday's meeting because my computer and I are having a few issues, but uh, I will get them in. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rogan, uh, uh, quite some time ago you promised us the loan status, um, and when are we going to get that? I actually did meet with, and I reported on this, I believe, right at the beginning, the first meeting of the new council. Um, I, did weeks ago. Yeah. I did receive a portfolio of the loans. Um, they were marked not for public release, um, but we're continuing to work on a plan to get some of the loans that are delinquent um, back paying again, whether it be through, through different incentives or through that, that, legal action. Thank you. I don't mean to cut you off, but it's my time, and that's not. I mean, that's fine. That's the job of the office to do. But we have a right to know what, how much they borrowed and how much they are delinquent. And I would like that. For instance, did uh, Boscovs pay their, uh, the payment they had due last July? I, I was asked by Ms. Abley not to release um, the information until these issues were resolved. That's public um, information. Uh, tabled. I mean, yeah, we're, we're going the wrong direction here on... on um, on visibility and transparency. Uh, also, there was pe legislation pending uh, and was tabled because waiting for a caucus with the Steamtown Partnership. When is that issue going to be come back to the forefront? Just, I know you don't have the answer now, but I would certainly like that one. There is, um, there is no schedule for a meeting with Boscovs at this time. What happened to the legislation that was tabled then? Um, Did it just go through automatically, or I, is that it, was in the or, that was in 2013, correct? Um, I'm not sure where that legislation is. It, it would okay. have to be reintroduced at this point. Okay, and I then, believe so. Okay, and then um, for those people who uh, I'm sure all property owners by now have received the dollar and cents impact of the percentage versions of the budget from last year. Uh, and I would just like to encourage anybody who is having a problem paying their taxes to call Mr. Blake's office. Almost everybody, all, almost all the legislators in this area have gotten behind some form of, not just some form, but HB, SB 76. And 
I don't ask them to lobby that. But if you're having a problem, our legislators need to know that. So please call Mr. Blake. Um, the RFP in today's paper for the city engineer uh, with questions going to the Department of Public Works when was this change made? I thought the city engineer worked for the uh, LIPS department. Okay. Uh, what line item is the financial expert, the budget, where is the budget for the financial expert that's been advertised? I would assume it comes under professional services, but, but which, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But which, which department? And, and which is their budget there for it. I mean, that's one of the, one of the issues I have is from the get-go, we've been circumventing the duly passed budget. Uh, the current mayor had the opportunity to submit a revised budget, but he didn't. And now we're doing all these things. And for that reason, uh, this grant, the PEL grant, uh, last year, uh, again, back to Mr. Rogan, he said he had this letter from PEL and, he, and it was quoted, based on our analysis, we make the following recommendations to the staffing and structure of the Office of Business Administrator. Establish the salary level of the business administrator at a level that will attract a qualified candidate. Raise the salary level of the finance manager in order to recruit a qualified candidate. I think we proved, because we hired people at the beginning of the year, without these increases. These increases are not free except for this year. Uh, as the paper stated, I think, um, I don't know what the word they used was, was, but again, the transparency of being able to attend the caucuses, it's one third. We get 100% the first year, it goes down by a third the second year, down by another third. We're going the wrong direction, people. We keep adding these chunks of money to our budget, and where is the money to pay for them? Where are the offsets? Uh, you know, it's very, it's very discouraging to see what's happening. I'll bring the rest back next week, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schumacher. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson. Good evening. Back from a rather nasty illness. Uh, you, I'll bet you all missed me. I heard John was, Jack was crying because I wasn't here. Uh, <laughs> I requested. Now, a uh, point of interest and I keep hearing more and more about it and how uh, financial advisors that have been hired are in favor of it. We have here an article about water policy in the sewer plant and on the right hand side there's a letter from uh, Food and Water Watch in Philadelphia um, all on how in Coatesville they sold their sewer plant and it resulted in a 400% hike in fees. Uh, and these people are paying about 900, over $900 a year. Currently I'm paying about $400 a year or somewhere around there, give or take a few. And uh, I keep pointing this out and they can, if they do purchase the uh, sewer plan or privatize it, they can stall, they can lobby, they can uh, go along. We, it, we're talking $140 million. Well, that's over 25 years. And there were activists for the river uh, whom I know worked tirelessly to get that extended out to 25 years. So that's a little more than five or six million dollars a year that we have to put into the sewer plant in order to comply. And if we took the sewer plant back like we did the last time, we would basically be responsible for anything they failed to do with their lobbying and stalling and taking the money 
and put it into their corporate coffers. So please, please, really consider this. Uh, it may not be the, uh, uh, the wonder, uh, wonder drug of the year. And uh, on trash, I gave you a, another one of those. And I'd like to point out that that's only going to save on tipping fees. And what we need to do is get people, the, the DPW workers, to start watching the trash and possibly have uh, a situation where they could leave a note that these people, that, sir, you're not complying with trash removal properly. And uh, I heard something about bags when I was at home and paper bag. And uh, I certainly hope that that someday doesn't result in someone tossing their bags on my lawn. Uh, personally, I think it should be per can, if anything, because bags get torn and they go all over the neighborhood. Jack and I have a mutual uh, acquaintance with cancer and a heart condition. And I seen him out there huffing and puffing away last spring, cleaning up that lady's garbage. And it's all over the court because she takes it out, tosses a bag. Whenever she feels like 15 minutes after the garbage is hauled out, she's tossing another bag there. And the cats, feral cats, skunks, you name it, are into it. It gets torn. It's all over the neighborhood. If that isn't blight, I don't know what is. Uh, now, um, Comcast. I heard her mention on Comcast getting a contract. My current Comcast bill for triple play, phone, internet, and television is $176. I don't know if they deserve a contract. I don't know what they deserve. They deserve a price cut. In France, it's regulated. You can't even get a job anymore nowadays without internet service. You cannot apply for a job. So the point in being that it's $40 a month for similar service in France under utility regulation. And here we're talking of 400 per, and I just got a note in, uh, in with my bill that they may be raising the price again because certain stations want more money. How about letting me choose what stations I want? I don't want the 700 Club. There's a, I don't want Duck Dynasty, <laughs> you know? And I'm an old uh, mountain man, uh, anthracite hillbilly from way back, but I don't care for people that uh, make disgusting remarks about other people. I won't watch you. And uh, on these funds for experts, especially the, uh, the one through the uh, Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce, uh, I have to question, it's become a, a real concern of mine uh, over the last, uh, about 50, 60 years ago, uh, I'll make a quick, uh, President Eisenhower's Secretary Treasury or IRS honcho changed the wording for a 5014C from uh, exclusively for nonprofit uh, must exclusively spend their money on uh, public welfare to primarily. And that's what all of this that you hear about the Tea Party wanting to break on their taxes. If I come to one of your rallies, I have to earn 25 bucks, come up with 25 bucks to give you 20. They don't. They, they, you have massive corporate interests donating them money and, uh, and uh, putting it on their tax deductions yet on top of it. So I'm really curious. It's to a point where I'm starting to see so much. Maybe some of these uh, so-called uh, tax exempts should have their exemption lifted. And it's time they start to pay. Tonight there was some church complaining that their snow wasn't removed. Sorry, Jamie. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, what did they pay the city to remove it? Nothing. You know, we removed uh, a lot of snow with our giant snowblower. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else?
Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Paul Casey. I'm a uh, resident of the 1500 block of South Irving Avenue. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Gunn and Mr. Rogan for responding and following up. I appreciate that. Uh, the issue is uh, in the winter, we barely get a plow on our side of the street. It's a, it's a double street. There's a top, a top side and a bottom side. Um, I'm just looking for a plow when it snows. Uh, the area that I'd like plowed is nine feet wide. I'm sure plows are a lot smaller. The excuse I get all the time is we can't fit a plow up there. They put a plow up there this week after I complained often enough. So that would seem to take away that excuse. Um, the hill has two different angled grades. There's a flatter side and a more steep side. Uh, the Palm Street side is, is a little bit flatter than the Fig Street side. So any runoff during the day will freeze at night, making it more difficult to come down on the Fig Street side. Um, I've come down sideways, hoping that traffic wasn't coming down Fig Street. Um, so I'd ask for salt more often than is given, at least on that side. Um, you know, the mayor and Director Gallagher have every reason to be embarrassed about the way these past two storms were cleaned up. The weather is not an effective snow removal tool. There are much better ways to take care of the snow. Um, looking at some of the comment section ideas in the newspaper, there's dedicated zones, assign drivers to a certain area of the city, um, work them on staggered shifts, um, tow cars that are buried in there. If they don't have time to shovel their car out, take them off the street to make it easier for the crews to do their jobs. Um, People have asked for curb to curb plowing. I, I can't expect one lane on my street to get plowed. I'm not expecting curb to curb. I mean, I could handle parking out, digging out my own parking spots if the city would do their part. Uh, do the job right the first time rather than piling up over time, doing it over and over again. There's a cost savings right there. Um, don't let snow go unplowed until it becomes unmanageable. Check your intersections and your hills. Make sure they're done and safe to get around. If this director can't or won't do this job or direct his staff, perhaps we need another DPW director. Um, I talked to Mayor Courtright in, over the weekend. Um, he claimed that there were a lot of calls about my block. I called twice. If there's more calls than that, that's indicative of a larger problem affecting a lot more people. That should be taken into consideration. Uh, finally, unrelated to the snowstorm, I've had a couch sitting curbside since November. Right now it's buried under snow, but the, the crews know it's there. They took the love seat, they took all the, all the couch cushions, they're leaving the couch there. This couch now reeks of cat urine. I'm sure I don't even know what other animals are living in it. I've emailed about it. My emails have gone un un unanswered. Um, it's just, I just wanted to get my two cents worth in that this current DPW director, and I, I know it's not the staff, they're doing what they can, but the director is not managing his staff very well at all. And uh, I appreciate you guys following up with me and making calls on my behalf. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Casey, uh, just a, a very quick question. Does the bottom portion of Irving Avenue get paved, or uh, they get do plowed they and paved that uh, as well? Frequently, uh, not frequently, but they get plowed every. They're storm. not paved. I'm plowed. I'm sorry. Yeah, they get plowed quite often, and that, we're just asking does, for one pass on top. But they won't go up to the upper. Right. Okay. And the 1400 block is is similar. Mm -hmm. it, it's equally narrow, but plows have gone up in the past. I don't see why they can't continue to go up. Thanks. Thank you. Excuse me. Any, anyone else who wishes to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Wexler. Thank you. 
Engineer from the Gulf. Um, besides sitting here tonight hearing these complaints, we've all gotten the same uh, calls and emails that are at our homes as well. Um, Right now, we've discussed this in pockets, and we'll get into it a little more. Mr. Gahan will get into it a little bit more. Um, but we are considering uh, coming up with a new plan for next winter. It's not going to help us this year. Um, but it is going to take input from the council, the administration, uh, neighborhood groups, and just to come up with a general plan of what would be the best way to alleviate the situation that we're facing. This is the snowiest February in, since, 2000, uh, since 1910. And I know that's not an excuse, but it is a reality. Um, some of the complaints that we heard tonight, there's also some responsibility for business owners and uh, homeowners um, to take care of their properties as well. Um, so this is, this is going to be a group effort from the city. Um, the council doesn't make it snow. The mayor doesn't make it snow. Um, so it's everybody's responsibility. And I think if we get together um, after this year, um, we can come up with a better plan because once the snow is gone then the next issue will be the potholes and, we'll, and that'll be the next uh, situation um, uh, another thing on Saturday night I attended the North Scranton uh, Vikings fundraiser for the LeBron family who suffered the terrible tragedy uh, it was a great outpouring from the community and anything we can do for that uh, family would be uh, greatly appreciated um, I'd also like to mention the passing of Bill Connell uh, Bill Connell was a friend of mine uh, for the past eight years. Um, the best thing about Bill Connell was his optimism. Um, tonight we heard a lot of problems with the city of Scranton. And Bill Connell knew those problems as well. But he decided to become part of the solution and work hard to fix these problems. Um, the city is not a good place after losing Bill Connell, I can tell you that. And if anybody wants to serve the city, they can use Bill as an example of bringing a positive attitude to serve our problems. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Mr. Rogan? Yes, um, a number of issues. Um, first, I would like to second what Mr. Wexler said about Mr. Connell. Um, he was a great guy. I'm proud to call him a friend. Um, last, just last year, we became very close neighbors. We actually live on the same block. Um, he's a great guy, and he'll be missed by, by everyone in the city. Um, couple other issues that were brought up tonight um, one is the potholes and I know Main Avenue has been brought up over and over again PennDOT did issue a release yesterday that those potholes um, on many of the state roads in our area were to begin being filled today pending weather um, I drove much of Main Avenue today <laughs> they, they were not fixed as of yet um, but from speaking to PennDOT that is the the next thing on their list um, hopefully the weather in the next couple days is better and we're hopeful that unfortunately the the hot patch isn't available yet because of the weather but PennDOT does have um, I'm not sure what they call it but it's kind of a, a hybrid between the hot and cold they take the cold patch and they uh, basically put it in a, a little transportable oven before they put it in it does get a little bit of a better hold so they're hopeful that those repairs um, will last through until the um, the plants open up in the spring um, regarding the snow I, I think you know we have all heard from many people regarding the, the problems with snow and sometimes it is it's the fault of the DPW other times it's not um, and I, I think one of the things people need to stop doing throughout the city is throwing snow in the roads after the roads are plowed um, on my block I know and I mean, luckily we have had pretty good snow removal in parts of my neighborhood this year the plow will go by, you'll drive, and then you'll drive back maybe an hour later, and you'll see three parking spots shoveled out and the snow in the middle of the road. And then when the cars come by, they drag it. So we all have to do our part. Um, the roads being clear are a matter of public safety. And nobody should have a situation like Mr. Casey did, and I know he showed, showed us all pictures. And just because he's on a road that's kind of off to the side and a little more difficult doesn't mean his shouldn't be clean. And at the same time, we don't want our DPW to have to keep going down streets again and again because neighbors are throwing snow in the road. Um, it's, it's a hazard and it creates more work and it costs the city more money. So hopefully people will, will try their best um, to, to pile the snow on their, in their yards or even in piles on the sides of the road, but please don't throw it in the road. Um, a couple other issues that were brought up tonight one is Senate Bill 76. I know it's something I talk about every week, 
Um, we actually are having a, a public caucus on Senate Bill 76 for those who are interested on March 6th at 5.30 in Council Chambers. Um, in attendance will be Kim Skimanek, the newly elected president of the Pennsylvania Realtors Association, Wayne Evans, the president of the Scranton Realtors Association, and Chuck Ledicki, who is um, in charge of the Real Reform 76 group that is um, out educating people regarding this bill and its effects on your property taxes. And as was mentioned by a speaker, our representatives in our area, with the exception of Senator Blake, are all in support of Senate Bill 76 in one form or another. Um, Senator Blake is the only uh, member currently that represents Scranton that has refused to sign on to for property tax relief for those who live in the city. So hopefully pressure will be put on him from residents calling um, to eliminate school property taxes. The sale of the garages was brought up. As I mentioned, the, if we continue on our current course of payments with the, the garages, we will pay one dollar of interest for every dollar in principle we currently have. Um, much like if you have a credit card and you're paying the minimums, it takes a very long time to get it paid off. The garages are already being subsidized by the taxpayers. Approximately $2 million a year, and that figure is only going to increase unless something drastic is done. Um, there are millions of dollars of repairs that need to be performed on these garages that haven't been made. So the city is really in a catch-22 where we would have to invest money that we don't have to repair the garages when they're already not solvent. So we'd be throwing good money after bad. And the other option is to sell them. And I know it's been mentioned that the debt owed on the garages is greater than the total value, which is true. But even at taking a loss by, say, we receive $30 million and pay that off the principal, that saves us an additional $30 million in interest. And then the city doesn't have to worry about repairs. It doesn't have to worry about subsidizing it yearly because they're taking a loss. Once that debt is paid off, it's, it's off the city's back. Also, having a private company in there running them, I believe, firmly would do a much better job than the city. I don't believe the city should be in the business of parking garages. Um, and on top of that, it would bring in revenue. We would receive revenue in mercantile tax um, and, and other taxes from a successful privately run parking garage. And finally, one issue I wanted to talk about that I was speaking to many people about today is the amusement tax. It's something that hasn't been mentioned um, in these chambers probably since it passed in 2012. Um, I was approached today by a number of musicians, um, small musicians, uh, local bands, and bar owners, tavern owners that have um, different acts at their place. And their concern is with the amusement tax being enacted that is going to negatively affect the small local band that may have 50, 100, 200 people at their show on a Friday night um, at a local bar. The bar owners are afraid that that tax will have, you know, the acts won't come to Scranton. They'll go to other towns that don't have um, this tax. And I know when this was passed, and I, I think I speak for all of us that, that voted on it, the intent was never to hurt a small local band. Um, the intent of, of the amusement tax was Montage Mountain, these large venues um, that do cost money to run. Um, when you know, there are accidents afterwards, our public safety has to respond, and you're bringing large amounts of people in, and there's a cost associated with it. Um, what I want to do, and I, I reached out to the mayor and spoke to him briefly about this today, and I also brought it up in, in the caucus, um, I want to look at a way to curb these undesi undesired effects of this tax, whether it be an exemption on the first X amount of tickets sold, maybe 100 tickets, 200 tickets, or an exemption on the first $500 or $1,000 that's taken <coughs> in. Um, the, the loss in tax dollars to the city will be minimal compared to what would be lost if these bands can't continue to operate in the city and these taverns lose a lot of revenue because of that. Um, so that is something I'm, I'm working on. I actually asked the musicians to come to me with some suggestions. And then at that point, I'll report back to my colleagues and, and we'll check with our solicitor to see 
what amendments to that ordinance would actually be legal. Um, that is all I have for now. I will, will comment on agenda items as they come up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Mr. Lasko? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, the only thing I have, I would like to uh, concur with my fellow colleagues on, the, on uh, Bill Connell, uh, on their sentiments, mine exactly. Bill was a friend, he was a gentleman, and as it was stated, he had this infectious optimism about him. And, uh, you know, I hope that lives on through all of us who are his friends, and I hope everybody remembers his family in their prayers. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. <laughs> um. A couple of uh, very quick items uh, well, until Mr. Gaughan comes back. A um, couple of, a uh, number of citizens have asked me, and I, I will look into um, what, the, what the situation is with the traffic light signalization, whether it's finished, whether it's on hold, whether it's um, yeah, what's going on? There, there are still, um, I believe, numerous problems with traffic lights in the in the downtown area. Um, the timing of them is poor. Uh, the length of some of them is onerous. Uh, but something needs to be done, and we need to get a finalization on this signal problem it's been going on for years and we just need to know when it's going to be finally resolved mr gone thank you um i just have a few things uh the first thing is and i mentioned it last week um about the uh snow um the problems with snow we've been having in the city obviously everyone is aware um, a few possibilities and ideas. Uh, one of them I mentioned last week was uh, alternate side of the street parking. Um, I, I looked at the city code section 412 and there is actually a procedure in place. All we would need to do is implement it. Um, I would like just to take a minute and read that. Uh, that we shall designate as snow emergency routes streets which are heavily traveled and are necessary thoroughfares for the movement of vehicular traffic through the city. Uh, such designation shall take into consideration state highway routes, fire apparatus emergency routes, and other commonly traveled streets. Each of such routes shall be posted with suitable signs or markers not less frequently than once in each direction in one block. Such signs shall bear the word snow route and may restrict parking in such block on alternate sides of such street. A map of such snow routes shall be filed with the city clerk and other copies thereof shall be available for public examination in the Departments of Public Safety and Public Works. Um, and the director of the Department of Public Works may change such map from time to time, copies of such changes uh, being entered as uh, for said. So uh, the procedure is in place. I think what we should do and is, is take a look at implementing this procedure uh, with alternate side of the street parking. Um, other cities um, like Allentown, Reading, uh, what they do is during a snow emergency, owners are required to remove their vehicles from posted emergency snow routes or else they would be ticketed or towed. Um, the Allentown Parking Authority offers free lots during snow emergency. Um, in Reading, same, same thing, city parking garages are open and provide free parking. Um, Residents may enter parking garage two hours prior to declared emergency. Vehicles must be removed within two hours of the ban being lifted. Uh, so I think it's definitely something uh, to look at. I think it would be good for residents, good for the DPW if we had a plan in place, especially for the downtown. Um, whether or not we use alternate side of the street parking or completely uh, block all traffic downtown for a certain amount of time when we do have a snow emergency. Um, also, the city of Pittsburgh, uh, I looked on their website, they have uh, a winter weather emergency resource guide. Um, basically, a, a guide for residents of what to do during a winter weather emergency in that city. Uh, they have a map, which I think would be good for the city of Scranton to post on their website once 
hopefully we get this up and running, of each area in the city um, that and designate these emergency snow routes and, and what residents can do. Um, so I think that's something that we should definitely uh, take a look at. The other thing that I would, uh, I brought it up in caucus, and I think it's a, a something that we should at least look at for next year's budget, is bringing back, uh, reinstating the casual workers for the Department of Public Works. Um, as everybody knows, it was uh, talked about last week that the DPW has some skeleton crews. Um, that's part of the problem. There's not enough manpower. Um, you know, they're, they're dealing with what, with what they have. So I think if we brought back the casual workers, that might relieve uh, some of those issues. Um, so I think that we should definitely take a look at that. Uh, the other item is uh, just to warn residents, I'm sure you've seen it in the paper, that there may be some flooding. Um, I know that I, I spoke to our DPW director, Dennis Gallagher, and uh, the DPW has been out uh, clearing stormwater drains and, and uh, uh, basins so that uh, water can flow freely and hopefully there won't be any issues, uh, but just to keep an eye on that. Um, also, I attended the Southside Neighborhood Crime Watch last night. Um, it was, it's a great group. I encourage any residents of Southside to uh, join. They meet every third Wednesday at 7 or 6.30 p.m. on Alder Street in the Southside Senior Center. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Very quickly, a, a couple of items. Um, there have been meetings with um, both with NRS and with another group called Turnkey, um, looking at the collection of delinquencies. Um, Turnkey specializes in mercantile and EIT delinquencies, um, and maybe a, a company that the city looks at for the collection of those. Um, NRS, who we cur currently contract with, um, we may look at moving uh, delinquencies for rental registration, parking, and the amusement tax um, to NRS. Um, but there are discussions for um, making attempts to maximize um, collection of all taxes and fees. Uh, the one thing that I would, just to piggyback some of the um, items with snow removal, and again, I will reiterate the one of the one one of the biggest problems I believe is the walkways um, and access to the downtown um, these walkways should be maintained by the city uh, snow should be removed from them by the city and we have met we have never really done a good job of that um, again it comes down to manpower and equipment um, and my father, who worked to walk to work every day of his life, uh, said that this has been a problem for, you know, 50 years. But uh, I think it's something that we really should um, consider at least having some type of um, policy in place for removal from the, the main, art main walking arteries to the downtown. Um, also, the, the last thing I'll mention, um, somebody asked if DPW could please post a schedule of refuse and recyclable pickups on the website, on the city website. Um, in case of emergencies or holidays, whatever, um, people would like to know when these pickups are occurring. Uh, and it would be easy enough to post any delays um, or changes on the website so that people could access that. Um, and uh, we, we will ask if that's done, that could be done. And um, other than that, um, we will get to fifth order 5B. 5B. For introduction and ordinance, amending file of council number 74, 1993 as amended, entitled City of Scranton Zoning Ordinance of 1993, by changing the zoning map designation of the John J. Audubon School from R1A 
medium low density residential to INSG general institutional in the central planning area in the eastern portion of the city of Scranton. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, I will say that in caucus there, oh, excuse me, there were representatives from Geisinger um, to explain what this uh, resolution was, and, or what this ordinance was and why it was um, being sent to us. Um, I think the biggest positive to this would be that um, should it be rezoned and the sale of the property take place, the, the site of Audubon School would then become a taxable property um, and removed from the um, tax exempt. It would no longer be a school property and it would no longer be under the st tax exempt status. Anyone else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. 5C for introduction, a resolution, appointment of Emmanuel Johnson, 1007 Scranton Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority. Mr. Johnson will be replacing Carol Oleski, whose term expired December 31, 2013. Mr. Johnson's term will expire December 31, 2018. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction, a resolution, appointment of Timothy Perry, 2325 Bernie Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505. <laughs> As a member of the board of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority, Mr. Perry will be replacing Peter Reby, whose term expired on February 4, 2010. Mr. Perry's term will expire on February 4, 2015. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Just on a question to mention, uh, it was asked in caucus if they submitted their resumes. Uh, we usually introduce if they have not, and they will be notified to submit their resumes prior to final votes. Yes. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, resolution number 25, 2014, appointment of Thomas Borthwick, 719 North Sumner Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as Vice Chairman of the Board of the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. Borthwick will be replacing Wayne Hiller, who resigned effective February 3, 2014. Mr. Borthwick's term will expire on June 1, 2016. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Yes, I'd just like to uh, congratulate Mr. Borthwick. He's a neighbor of mine, and I, I know he'll do a great job on the board. You have a lot of neighbors. <laughs> I do have a lot of neighbors. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes, and I too would like to compliment or congratulate Mr. Borthwick. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 26, 2014. Appointment of William Connell, 606 North Bromley Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as Chairman of the Board of the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. Connell will be replacing Kathleen Stella, who was removed from the board by letter dated January 22, 2014. Mr. Connell will fill the unexpired term of Kathleen Stella, whose term is scheduled to expire on June 1, 2015. I'd like to make a motion to table item 7B. Second. On the question, all those in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 27, 2014, 
Appointment of Paul McGloin Sr., 139 South Merrifield Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Board of the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. McGloin will be replacing Frank J. Tunis Jr., who was removed from the board by letter dated January 22, 2014. Mr. McGloin will fill the unexpired term of Frank J. Tunis Jr., whose term is scheduled to expire on June 1, 2017. I would like to make a motion to table item 7C. Second. On the question. All those in favor of tabling, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Any other business? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned.